Square Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hamlin, I'm here to Square Pixel. Um, and I thought that today um, I'd like to talk about a topic that I think is very close to many underwater image makers' hearts um, and one that we're all quite actively involved with. And I, and I think that, you know, as, as individuals, the underwater image making community is very, very committed to marine conservation, very, very committed to trying to preserve the, the oceans and, and actually as a group is pretty aware as well of, of the threats that face those oceans and, and are proactively trying to um, counter those threats or to deal with those threats and in part that's by using their imagery um, to share and to make people engage and to make people um, aware of the issues that face it. So obviously that could be imagery of um, iconic species which motivates people to learn more about them or possibly to, to seek to protect them or alternatively can also be um, taking pictures of degraded marine environments or, or um, detrimental environmental activities that um, impact on, on the health of the oceans um, and their inhabitants, obviously. Um, with that in mind, um, one of the sort of species that I think we're all very engaged in protecting, um, and obviously they're very iconic, is, is the worldwide, pop worldwide population of sharks. And I'm sure that the majority of people viewing this video will be aware of the fact that sharks are in a lot of trouble. Um, you know, from a, a standpoint of a species population, we're probably already facing in with some species kind of functional extinction in a way they may exist in, in significant numbers in very specific areas, but their global reach is so restrained that that, that presents problems. So, so, you know, this is an ongoing and very real issue. And one, and one that I'm, I'm very pleased to report that the image makers as a community, again, tend to respond to, tend to try and help, try to do things through their own actions and through um, supporting campaigns that can help to improve shark conservation. Um, so with that in mind, um, on the 27th of March, or just before the 27th of March, um, WetPixel was contacted by um, a group of Maldivian um, environmental organizations um, and they were highlighting some issues that had recently arrived in the Maldives. Now, to give a little bit of history, the Maldives banned shark fishing 11 years ago. Um, it's banned, that's commercial shark fishing within its waters um, and in a movement similar to the, the one that the Bahamas did, although the Bahamas did it considerably earlier. Um, and obviously the goal here is that the, the Maldives is, is an island nation and surrounded by the sea. And obviously the protection of the sea and its ecosystems directly impacts on um, the Maldives' um, livelihood. Now, the um, ministry, uh, the Minister of Fisheries in the Maldivian Majlis, or which is the Maldivian Parliament, had made some comments basically suggesting that she was considering reopening the shark fishery. Um, and this was seized upon by, by various environmental groups, um, including the same many local ones within the Maldives. Um, and I think the comment actually, and I'll make sure I get the phrase correct by, by quoting it, um, is that, um, there would be it would allow the exploitation of the the sharks as an economic resource and and the, the minister which is Zaha Wahid couldn't see any reason why the Maldives couldn't benefit from the economic resource um, and quite rightly you know when they're taken on their own and out of context or with, without any context those are very disturbing statements and they certainly sound like you know, the Maldives is about to reopen its, to, to overturn the ban on, on shark fishing um, and reopen shark fishing as a commercial activity, as an economic activity within its waters. Um, so as a result of this, um, Wet Pixel and lots of other organizations got on board. Um, there was a an email campaign that was launched um, and people were contacting, um, I know CSAVE, for example, contacted the, um, the, the ministry directly and you know there was lots of attempts to reach out to people in the Maldives and to to, to generate a um, a movement um, which was saying that basically we we were urging them to reconsider this apparent decision um, and this has been going on there are various campaigns still going on, on social media um, and you know I think I think whilst obviously people's engagement in this is very important um, and we really, really should be engaged. I think possibly this does display some of the potential problems with with launching campaigns because um, an organization called Shark Guardian um, actually went out and spoke to um, the minister um, and interviewed her. Um, obviously, it's an online interview because we can't travel at the moment. Um, 
And in this, it actually the actual um, context of the statements that the minister made became much more obvious. And, and maybe it takes a little bit of explaining, but the, the Maldives used to have a, um, a licensing system for long line, this is tuna long line fishing, um, within its um, in its economic um, zone um, and this was originally I think it was 70 kilometers offshore from the islands um, 70 to 100 kilometers offshore from the islands or something like that um, and inevitably you know it, that that actually um, was the 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 commercial the, that was allowed to overseas vessels not just Maldivian vessels now um, this terminated in 2010 um, in actual fact, there was there wasn't long line fishing going on, but there is a resolution um, within Parliament at the moment, which is Resolution Fishery Regulation Number 2014RR388, um, which has now been reinstated, um, and they're now looking at reopening the long line fishery, um, tuna long line fishery. Now, part of any long line fishery, fishery operation is the bycatch, and, and bycatch is pretty pretty bad with um, long line fisheries and it results in a lot of bycatch and a lot of the sort of pelagic species like sharks, turtles, these kind of things, other kind of things that get caught up in bycatch. So it will, you know, a reopening long line fishery is not going to be good for sharks. It's not, it's not Kotob. But what the minister's comments were, or it would seem what the minister's comments were, were indirectly in, in relation to what do they do with bycatch that's been caught in these long line fisheries. And what she was saying essentially was it would be crazy to get rid of the bycatch, to dump it, dead fish, just chuck it back in the sea. They should exploit it as a commercial resource. So what she's advocating is basically bycatch caught as a part of the long line fishery should be used as a resource. And, and it's hard to disagree with that. You know, if the fish is caught at that point, arguably, you know, we should be using it as an economic or a food resource. I mean, you know, the, the two can be the same. Um, because once once the animal's dead, now sh whether there should be a long line tuna fishery offshore of the Maldives or not, that's a different issue. But it's important to stress that it seems that the comments that she made were related directly to the um, bycatch, which might result from a reinstatement of, uh, of the proposed reinstatement of the the long line fishing operations offshore. Um, so. In addition, um, conservation organisations had also been pointing out that there had been some examples of um, effectively illegal shark fishing going on in the Maldives, and some of them have been quite well documented. There was quite imagery. And um, on the back of that, in actual fact, quite f apart from overturning the ban, the minister pointed out that actually they'd stepped up patrols and they'd increased enforcement activities to try and prevent it, and had actually been successful in, in um, seizing over four, just under uh, 400 30 kilograms of fin um, recently. Um, so, you know, they, 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 they actually found in response to the issues around illegal shark fishing, not only were they um, not only were they taking action, but they're actually stepping in, they're increasing their enforcement action. So, so um, and she was at pains to stress throughout the interview that there is no plan to overturn the existing ban on, uh, on shark fishing within the Maldives. So, so I guess you could argue the campaign has been successful in that in that it has there isn't going to be a reopening of shark fishing. That's not happening. Um, I guess what we probably should now do though is be prepared to turn around and to support the Maldives in their attempts to to continue with the ban and no longer to be obviously we were all quite critical, I think, of them because of the, the planned um overturning of the ban or the the reported of turning of the ban um, and possibly now it's time to say sorry we got that wrong you know in actual fact you know we know you guys are doing really well and we're going to support you with whatever you do and we're going to do our best to try and help out and, and bluntly right now the Maldives like the rest of the world is in a pretty a precarious state economically um, you know it is a, an island that it's an island nation that, that primarily its primary source of revenue is overseas tourism and, and obviously that's largely not happening so and um, I guess this would be a good opportunity that if you haven't considered it, this would be a good opportunity to consider a trip to the Maldives um, um, go and take some pictures of their sharks, share those pictures of the sharks, show the sharks, show what a success story the, the Maldives is making of its, its shark conservation. You know, we, we should be we should be heralding its success. 
and try and promote it as a destination for um, for shark photography and for photography underwater photography and videography of of, um, of the oceans because it you know it is a place that's proactive and protecting it and the best thing we can do now is to go out and show how they're doing that. So um, I guess personally, apologies to um, for misleading wet pixel community with the original article. It wasn't obviously it wasn't an intentional um, thing, but it's something that happened. Um, and you know we have now obviously posted about the um, fact that the the comments seem to be posted in our context and, and tried to give it the context within which they were actually made, um, so that people can now obviously view what the context was. And, you know, I hope, as I say, I hope that this will serve to to reassure the Maldivian people and the the, the, the powers that be in the Maldives that uh, the underwater imaging community is definitely behind their shark conservation efforts. Um, and we basically, well, we got it wrong, you know, so let's be honest. Um, very briefly, while on the subject of shark conservation, um, my fellow, or my normally fellow, um, presenter on this um on this uh, on webpixel live is often obviously alex mustard many of you many of you have seen him in the episodes um and um alex um together with chris fallows um who is a well it was one of the original kind of shark experts um fantastic body of work particularly with great whites but with lots of other sharks too um and the shark scientist neil hammerschlag are um combining together on the photo ex photography expert site sorry to present a presentation um about shark conservation and shark imagery um and it's entitled shark photography and conservation and it's due to happen on the 21st of april at um 1900 or seven o'clock at seven o'clock GMT, seven o'clock UK time. So obviously, um, please convert that to your local time. It does require booking. I'll put the link to the um, event in the, the show notes um, below. So please have a look at that. Um, I, if, and obviously all three of them, um, experts in their, in their fields, have a wonderful body of shark imagery. It should be a real treat um, and something to look forward to. So um, please head on over to Photography Experts Click the link um, and book in. It does say it does require booking, so so you will need to book if you want to if you want to see the event. All right, that's wonderful. Um, thank you very much to everyone for watching. Um, please feel free to add any comments about shot conservation or anything else in the comment section and drop a like if you enjoyed. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next time.